Navy blue Victoria. As he uses his feet, goes again through midwicket. That's an even better shot from the Victorian captain. Swept away very nicely by the Cole Bottom for four. Oh, he's re-given! That is 50. The man from Northcote. And welcome to another edition of the Vic State Cricket Podcast. I'm Adam White and we're joined this week by the captain of Victoria, the captain of the Renegades, Sophie Molyneux. Sophie, welcome. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Welcome back. How good is it to be back playing cricket again? Yeah, it's great. Um, had a really good week, a couple of wins for, for the Vicks. We're back on the board, which is which is nice feeling going into a Christmas break. But um yeah, absolutely loved my time out there this week. So just before Christmas, you, you got back to be playing cricket again. Unfortunately, you missed out, out being able to play in the red, but you got out there playing in the navy blue. Just to be back playing again, um, r- rather than the specifics, but just to be back with the girls playing again, what was it like? Yeah, I, to be honest, I had a smile on my face for the for the whole week and even just the, the couple of weeks leading up into it. Um just getting back into full training and, and feeling um, normal. <laughs> um, yeah, and getting out of that rehab. But, um, yeah, we've got a, a great group and spent a lot of time um, in the in the rehab room. But, um, yeah, to graduate from that and to, to be able to get out there, I just, yeah, as I said before, I, I don't think a smile left my face for the whole week. Was there something that happened or a, a moment where you thought, I'd forgotten how good this was? <laughs> um yeah, it's probably more the the lead up to the first game. Um, I sort of forgot that feeling, to be honest. Um, a little bit of nerves, but I was just genuinely um, really excited to to play cricket again. Um, I think, yeah, the build up to that was um, it felt a little bit bit foreign to me, yeah. <laughs> to be honest. But um, yeah, that was the whole week. It's been a it's been a really special week. Are you someone that gets nervous, the butterflies driving to a game of cricket or the, the, the night leading up? Are you someone that gets a bit edgy or are you someone that sort of takes it all in your stride? Uh, I probably don't get too nervous. Um, this time around I was probably <laughs> just because there had been a, a few days between drinks. But, um, mm-hmm. yeah, I think this, this time I was a little bit nervous but, but normally I'm, I'm not too bad. I want to go back to when you first did your name because it was uh, – it was a terrible time in the in the sense of just luck, having seen you walk around in a moon boot with your stress fra- stress fractures to then in a knee brace. How difficult was that to come to terms with at the time, particularly as a leader of Victorian cricket of the Renegades, that that would happen again? Yeah, I think early doors, um, yeah, it rocked me. Um, I think when you, you come back from an injury, you, you sort of just – all you want to do is just have a, a run at it. Um I certainly wasn't expecting for that to happen and I think that's sport though. Like you, um, you sort of just have to ride, ride those waves and, um, yeah, at the start it rocked me and the thought of missing another year of cricket um, obviously didn't really sit well but um, once you get into the, the rehab and um, I was really lucky just to, to have a, an amazing support crew um, around, you, you sort of – yeah, it feels like a, a year's a long time, but when you when you look at it, sit back and look at it, there was um, definitely some good parts to it. What do you think you'll learn about yourself through that time? <laughs> um, patience. Yeah. <laughs> patience and, um, oh, I don't know, you just spend, yeah, a lot of time um, probably just at a slower rate, <laughs> mm. rate of knots, to be honest. Um, probably, yeah, the last three or four years, had, it's been a bit of time on the road and, um just playing the game and yeah you can sort of just get caught up in that in that lifestyle and which is a great one um so to yeah to strip it all back and and have a year at home pretty much um yeah I sort of started enjoying the the mundane things in in life and um yeah hopefully that that'll help me moving forward too because it's interesting for someone like yourself and there's others like this that have been in a high performance professional environment pretty much since their teenagers, to almost step away for nearly 18 months if you include the the stress fracture as well and just be a normal person, that can be good and bad. What, what How did you find that? Yeah, I, look, I obviously missed the game. Mm. Um, but the other side of it, I, I did, like I had opportunities to go home, back to Bensdale, um, yeah, which I normally wouldn't be able to do. Yep. Um, so just little things like that and, and just... 
probably being able to build a bit of a connection with our, our group here in Victoria. Um, yeah, having my feet on the ground here has been has been wonderful and um, we've got such a, a great group of um, girls that are, are willing to, to get better um, and to, yeah, even though I wasn't playing, just to, to spend that time um, in particular in the, in the winter, um, yeah, working working in that space of, um, yeah, getting our off-field right. Mm. Um, that was, yeah, I got a lot out of that and um, they certainly, yeah, have, have given me a lot of energy along the way. Because the reason I ask the question is talking to a lot of athletes over the years who do a knee, um, maybe do a second knee, is that perspective is the word that comes to mind about it's great being a professional athlete but there's also a lot of life to be lived and there's a lot of life out there that once you get a better perspective, it actually makes you a better athlete when you come back and start playing again. Do you? I know you've only played a couple of games yeah. since, but do you feel that might be the case with you? Because you're only what twenty five. Yeah, twenty five. Um, touch wood. That's that's the that's the plan, I suppose. Um, yeah, to to spend that time in the in the real world in the real world. Sorry. Um, yeah, I suppose that you can't take the game for granted now that mm. I'm back in. The, involved and um yeah I've, I've always loved the game <laughs> mm. um but yeah probably have come back even more excited about um yeah playing sometimes cricket doesn't love you back though does it i mean <laughs> it, for everybody who loves playing cricket it's a a love hate relationship with it so i don't know maybe perspective does help yeah in the long term absolutely um simon helmet i spoke to simon um leading the lead up to having a chat to you i hope he doesn't mind me saying this but he talked about how you are so much a better leader for what you've gone through with your injuries because a little bit like you said before, probably got more time to have those connections with the, the players, maybe a better understanding of the game, how it's coached as well as how it's played. Could that? Do you think that's a, a fair call? Um, oh, I'd hope so. You always want to um, get better in that space and, yeah, probably only doing it for a couple of years and, and spending a majority of that time mm. not playing whilst leading. I did find that really tricky um, this year. Is, yeah, you end up speaking a lot of words and sitting down in a lot of rooms and writing a lot of words on a, on a whiteboard and um, I really struggled just sitting on the sidelines and, and watching and not being able to make a, a difference. Um, but, yeah, I, I suppose just looking at the game from different perspectives and um, – yeah, maybe going through an injury um, can help me connect with, with people that might touch wood they don't, but if they ever end up in situations that um, – but, yeah, for me it's all about connections and um, that's that's probably the big piece for um, for my, my leadership. I mm. think I just, yeah, put a lot of value on um, the, the connection piece. Did you have anything to do with Nick Maddinson through your recovery period? Because it was this crazy situation where – the captain of the Renegades in the men's and the captain of the Renegades in the women's did their knee at such similar times. Did you Were you bumping in, into each other in the gym or going out for coffees and saying, yeah, that's happening to me as well? <laughs> what was that like? Yeah, it was um, Yeah, it was a weird one. <laughs> you actually wouldn't be able to, to, to imagine that Nothing. happening and then it did and um, we'd spent, yeah, that whole year pretty much crossing paths in the gym and um, we'd always compare programs or what we we're doing or different exercises or where we were at where we were at I think every ACL is different mm. um so that was really interesting and yeah um, it's great to see him, him back playing and he's um it looks like he's hitting the ball really well and um looks to be enjoying the game too which is which is cool to see did you ever think you could have got back for the renegade season because obviously such a young team and you being the captain and, and one of the best players and then you've got the three-gun international players that, that didn't have the seasons they would have liked. Was this almost a temptation to try and get back earlier? How did how did that last period in your recovery take place? Yeah, like the whole the plan the whole way was to, to try and get back for it um, with the understanding of we, we weren't going to be entirely sure until it came around. Um, just with the nature of a, an ACL injury, it's it's quite hard to, to pick a certain date um, mm. and and return on that date because um, it, it just goes in waves. You, you have a good patch of four weeks and then you might have a little setback. And, um, yeah, so for a while there I, I thought we're in for a good chance and, um, yeah, just with the, the nature of how my rehab progressed, it was um, 
yeah, we sort of made the call probably a couple of weeks out from the Big Bash knowing that um, we, we really wanted to dot the I's and, and cross the T's on this one and not um, come back, yeah, too early. Because I guess for you, you've got you've to be thinking about your Renegades and Victoria, but also yourself with all these additional opportunities now for, for, for women in cricket. Um, the career possibilities, the money that can now be earned, you've got to kind of be looking long term probably more than at any point in your career or any women's cricketer's career. Yeah, the way the game's going, it's it's really exciting. and um, there, there is so many opportunities now, um, even... As a domestic cricketer, you know you can you can put your name down in these drafts and and land one gig, and that could roll on to, to many more. And you're almost playing cricket ten months of the year, which is the dream, really. Um, so yeah, there's there's there is a lot of opportunity there, and there's a lot of games of cricket to be played. Um, so never really want to look t- too long term, but um, yeah, in terms of making the decision to come back, I just wanted to to be a hundred percent and and be confident in it. I want to ask you about the Victorian setup. Um, shortly and even the Renegade set up just where Victorian women's cricket are at. So I won't ask too many more questions about yourself, but do you think those opportunities will still be there for you ne- from now? I mean, obviously you've made a, a great start with, back with Victoria, but whether it's the 100, whether it's the um, all the stuff that's going on in, in India now with the, the IPL, women's IPL, is that do you think that'll come back quite quickly for you or you try not to think too far ahead? No, I don't really want to think too far ahead, I think. Um, maybe with that first injury maybe a couple of years ago, I'd probably got, um, yeah, tried to, to think too far ahead, I think, and, and learnt that it's probably <laughs> not the best way to go about it because it's so much of it is out of your control. And, um, yeah, that's one thing I've, I've probably really learnt over the last 12 months is, um, yeah, just being the moment and, um, <laughs> I'm just happy to play any cricket in any colours at the moment. Fair enough, good answer. So where do you see the Victorian women's game at the moment? It seems like there are a lot of really exciting young players and you are very young, but the results necessarily haven't been there over the last couple of years, both red, green or or navy blue. Where do you sort of see the overall picture for women's cricket here in Victoria? Yeah, uh, well, yeah, there's there's so much talent um, Mm. in in our squad and... um, and as you said, they they are still quite young, and we are a really young group. But um, yeah, I feel like it's just a matter of time before before things click. And and sometimes you know we've got a young group of fast bowlers too, which which can take a little bit more time. And um, just seeing them day in day out, they they're really hungry, and they know um, they know what they want out of out of their careers and they're all ambitious and that's wonderful and at the same time they're they're buying into to what we want as a team as well and that ultimately is to have success and um yeah I think patience is probably the the first thing that comes to mind with with a group like that but at the same time I think the way that um we've been able to turn it around those games against New South Wales it just takes you know a week like that to be able to yeah, just show show to ourselves and um, yeah, get that get that winning feeling and, and learning that um, it was something we'd been searching for for a while in in all spaces in in blue, green, and red. <laughs> um, yeah, so hopefully yeah, that that's the start of um, something that's yeah can can carry through for the rest of this season and beyond. How tricky is it? And the men have the same challenges as well, where you you're going from. The navy blue of Victoria to red and green, then back to navy blue again. It, it, it is hard, I would imagine, to build that continuity in a group. So I'm interested from you as a player, but also as a leader, how you get that juggle right. Yeah, it's a it's a good question. I think um, finally working out that <laughs> it's yeah we've got to a place as a, a Victorian squad. I think. Um, yeah, there, there is genuine care and connection um, amongst the group, which is, which is the first point of call, and it's um, when the girls break break off and, and play in their um, in their teams. It's yeah, I, I think people get really excited to, to be able to do that and um, for something else. But by the end of Big Bash, everyone's excited to come back in yeah. and play for Victoria again. So um, yeah, that's a it's a really nice um, there's a nice feel about it, and I think. Um, yeah, we're putting in a lot of work 
especially over the last couple of years with a really a new squad, a lot of new faces. Um, yeah, we're, we're putting a lot of work off the field to make sure that um, yeah we've created a a locker room that um, yeah celebrates individuals, um, celebrates hard work, and, and also yeah we we also know how to have a bit of fun whilst mm. whilst doing it. Because the other part of that continuity piece is that you've got four or five players out of the team at the moment because they're over with the, the national team. Now other states have those challenges as well, but perhaps not as much at times when it comes to Victoria. And then obviously with the situation with Meg, it's it's a moving piece all the time about what your best 11 is, um, what your best 15 is in a squad. It, it changes all the time. How, how as a leader do you keep those not fringe players but and not depth players. So I think that's being a bit disrespectful, but those players that will play sometimes and perhaps not play at other times. Yeah, I think with the nature of um, the scheduling and that now, we, we pretty much sort of a lock in to have those Australian girls maybe two games max a yeah. season yep. um, now. And, and it's absolutely, it's wonderful when they're around. They, they bring so much to the squad and I, I think that they enjoy being around as well and um, – yeah, it's it's we've sort of wanted it to be or feel like home when they when they get back and put the navy blue on and um, yeah, I think there's yeah there's a lot of space there that's been created for the, for the Aussie girls to come in and to to help those younger girls because you know when you've got you know two of the, the greatest players of all time in in Megan mm. in Megan Elise in your in your squad um, be pretty silly not to yeah. to make the most yeah, of that right. and their yeah. experience so. Um, yeah, it's been, um, I think the young girls are, are really, you know, making the most of, of that experience. You talked before about those wins against New South Wales before Christmas. It's almost like reward for effort in a lot of ways. Do you think it could trigger a few special things for you going into 2024? Yeah, hopefully. Hopefully it's just unlocked a little bit of um, that confidence that I think we're all sort of craving a little bit, um, especially when you start a season off. Um, with a few losses at WNCL and, and going into Big Bash and not playing out yep. the way we'd planned. And, um, you know, in sport you just need to get that feeling of winning and, yep. and sometimes that can be – you can carry that um, with you and you, you end up winning games you shouldn't. And mm-hmm. um, so hopefully um, that becomes – yeah, everyone starts to, to crave winning and, and know how to do it and mm-hmm. hopefully that rolls into a, to the back end of our season. What did you like the most from that two-game series, apart from your own performances, which were pretty special? Outside of you, what were the, who was some of the people that thought, "Ah, this is this is good. This is encouraging." Yeah, I think everyone played a, a role um, at at one point or another in in both games, and and that was the really pleasing thing for for all of us. I think just to see um, and being out there and feeling it actually felt like a a proper team. Um, mm-hmm. We played as a team. Um, yeah, Millie Illingworth come back and, and bowled really well um, the second game after not bowling in that first game. And, um, you know, our, our top six, everyone had an innings over the last um, over the last two games as well. So there's plenty of positives. And um, I think, yeah, the big one for me was the feel of it and it, it felt like everyone was – um, was in it and yeah there was there was times in the game where it could have gone either way and um, yeah there was a bit of fight there which which I loved mm. which was really really good and it was actually really enjoyable to be a part of it. Uh, in that last game six wickets and 62 runs is it's, could, could you quite believe how well you've come back? I said I wouldn't ask any more questions about yourself, but <laughs> yeah. it was it was quite remarkable watching it. Just the shape you were getting on the ball, the variation with the ball, the way you batted. It was like it was like you hadn't been gone. Um, but did it, did it surprise you how quickly it all has come back? Uh, yeah, yes and no. I feel we've done a lot of work, um, <laughs> and it really I think that big that big wind that that probably helped <laughs> the shape on the ball. There's a lot of things that went my way, which um, I was very lucky, but. Yeah, I think um, yeah, uh, it's really it's really pleasing just to play the game again, to be honest. And um, had no expectations going into it. I just knew that it was going to be fun, and we were going to fight as hard as we could to beat New South Wales twice, which we did. Um, so yeah, the the personal stuff that um, 
it's probably nice to to feel like you you can play cricket still um, after you know twelve months of probably going through waves and and not feeling like a cricketer or, or doubting um, where you're at because the games moved so quickly um, in that space. But um, yeah, it was just a, a great feel and um, yeah to walk away with two to walk away with two two wins against New South was um, pretty special for this group. And the captaincy, sometimes, I mean, captaincy in a T20 game, there's so much going on, to come, or oh, 50 over cricket as well, but to come back and take charge straight away, is that another thing that, that, that came back to you naturally? Is it, did you find that there were three or four others that were, oh, this is all right, you've improved in this area from a, a strategic point of view, I can actually come to you for advice now and this is, this is good, this is building our, our leadership sort of base a little bit more from, from stepping back onto the field again for the first time in such a while. Yeah, absolutely. That was one of the big things that stood out to me, I think. Um, just the, you know, you got girls like Soph Day and Nick Fulton and Georgia Presswich were they're probably a little bit older. They're not. They're not old at all. They're probably only twenty three mm. to twenty five years old. Yeah. But um, they've gone up another level in terms of their their knowledge for the game and and just them backing themselves and um, being able to come up to me with with ideas or thoughts, um, which were all great ideas. Mm. And um, that was yeah, that was one of the big things that yeah I took away that there's been a massive growth in that space and that's really pleasing because, you know, that the more the more voices you can get, um, the more girls thinking about cricket like that um, is only going to help our team, that's for sure. I, I want to ask you about Nicole because I, f- I feel that she's had to grow up really quickly with all the things that have happened around her, none, none of it being her fault, but she's had to step into a lot of big responsibilities, whether, whether it be just her batting, whether it be her leadership, and sometimes that can be to the detriment of her own performance, I think. And that could be the case with anybody. Then when it starts to come back, as in you come back and a few others start to come back, and she can start to just focus on her game herself, she might flourish and go to the next level quite quickly. Is that is that fair, do you think? Yeah, I, I think Fultz is, um, yeah, she's a natural leader and I think she, she gets a lot of energy um, leading girls and, um, and groups of people and, I think what she's what she's been able to do over the last couple of years um, has been, you know, it's it's been outstanding. She's she's done a lot of work in that space, and you can see her really, really grow into herself as a, a person and a leader. Um, and and all the girls absolutely adore her, and um, her cricket is is going really well too. And it's mm. it's tracking. I really feel like it's it's tracking in the right direction. And um, yeah, hopefully she can yeah over these these next few games just um enjoy being out there she still she still thinks about the game she still mm. <laughs> comes up to me with ideas and um is a a big yeah shoulder for me to to lean on at times and um yeah her the way that the last couple of years it's yeah as you said a lot of it hasn't been um yeah. It's just been thrust upon it, it hasn't has, it? It has, and yeah. she's taken it really, really well. Yeah. She's, she's, yeah, she's an incredible person. She's got a lot of energy um, and she's just taken it in her stride and it's going to hold her in good stead for, for a long time, that's for sure. Mm. No, I like her as a cricketer. I think she's, she's got that – I think she's got those skills that can really just, you know, at any point you go, oh, where's this come from? But yeah. it's, it's been something that's been building slowly because of all those extra responsibilities I think she's had where you can tend to – not worry about your own game so much and you start to worry about making sure everyone else is okay, that she's now got that opportunity to hone in pot- potentially more on, on just on her game. Yeah, and she's got that edge about her. Yeah. She's a she's a Gippsland girl, so it must be something <laughs> in the water down there, but she's she's super competitive and, and loves to get into the battle and, um, yeah, she's um, definitely, yeah, some special things around the corner for her, I think. And one last one on, on you, and, th- and we're almost at the end of the chat. You said before you don't want to look too far ahead. But at, at 25 and everything that you've achieved on the field for Australia and for Victoria and for the Renegades and then these setbacks you've had, do you still feel that your best is, is ahead of you? Is that something that motivated you maybe even through your, your, your comeback to say, no, nah, I've still got a lot left to give? I hope so. Um, I think. Through every <laughs> injury, there's been an opportunity to to grow, and if that's um, as an athlete, as a cricketer, but 
as a person as well. And, um, yeah, yeah, but I'd like to think that hopefully keep evolving with the game. Obviously the game's going um, and improving at a rate of knots at the moment. So um, that's the, the really fun challenge now is to, to be able to keep up with it, I suppose, and, and keep doing that. And, um, yeah, I see that as just a, a great opportunity to be able to keep pushing the boat and, um, yeah, we'll see where it takes it. Hopefully there's, there's more to come, but um, at the same time it's, it's just nice to be playing cricket again. In, in the modern game... Suits you. You bat and you bowl and you lead. You're good fielder. Are you more a batter or a bowler? Or you? <laughs> I know, I'm sure you've been asked this question lots yeah. of times, but you're almost like the dead set fifty fifty. <laughs> uh, probably over the the la- the trends of the last few few years, I've probably done more with the ball. Um, mm. But yeah, I've always loved batting. Um, it just reminds me of of being a kid and and being in the nets with dad for for hours on end. Um, and playing at West Bend, I just sort of think back and don't think too much about bowling. It was all about batting back then and um, I still love it and I still feel like it's a really good challenge for me to, to keep evolving in that space. And, um, yeah, I, I love both obviously and um, – but, yeah, I think my heart lies with batting at the moment. <laughs> <laughs> wow. So I was talking before about the opportunities when it comes to what's ahead for you. I know you don't want to look too far ahead. But we are talking before about what's happening in India with women's cricket. You've got the WPR. Now, you've already been picked up um, to play. How much does that give you confidence with what you've missed to go, hey, they still remember me? They still <laughs> they still rate me? Yeah, I suppose it, it did give me a little bit of confidence and I think more so I was just a bit shocked and, and surprised that it, it popped up. But, um, yeah, I think the thought of being able to, you know, get on a plane, go overseas mm. and, and play cricket again. Um, that's pretty cool. And, yeah, just watching on last year was a was a pretty incredible tournament. Um, yeah, the, the best players in the world are, are over there. So to be a part of that, um, it would be hopefully a really cool experience. Do you have to pinch yourself when you think of the girl from Bansdale who's all of a sudden now in a situation where you could be playing cricket pretty much 12 months of the year to go and play in this massive tournament in India, the experiences you've already had playing in the UK with the 100. Um, it's not just what's happening here. It's, it's around the world now that these opportunities are opening up and it, and it, and it's working. It's special. Is that, is it, yeah. And it's happening quickly. Yeah, it is. It's happening really quickly. And I think, um, yeah, a lot of young girls out there um, can look forward to some amazing opportunities and it's just great to see the game that, and how far it's come to from even when I first started, nothing like this was, was happening. So it's moving quickly and, um, yeah, hopefully there's there's more young girls picking up a cricket bat at the moment because they can see um, what potentially, yeah, could could play out in that space. Just recently we've had the, the women's test in, in India where very strong Victorian representation there. Um, someone, Georgia Wareham's an interesting one. We've, we spoke to Georgia oh, about... Oh, maybe a couple of months ago in the build-up to the, the WBBL, with the setbacks that she's had, is she a bit of an inspiration to you is to sort of say, well, that's that's what's possible for Georgia. It can be possible for me as well. Yeah, absolutely. She's Wolf's a, one of my best mates and, um, yeah, to have seen what, what she was able to you know, overcome and um, slip straight back into that Australian team like, <laughs> like nothing <laughs> had happened and um, won a World Cup pretty quickly. So... Um, to see it all play out really quick for her, um, well, firstly, as a mate, I was just over the moon for her and you could see that little sparkle in her eye when she was playing again, mm. um, which was which was great to see and is great to see. And, um, yeah, I suppose going through a, a similar sort of rehab, I'd spent a lot of time <laughs> chatting to her about it and working out um, if it was on the right track or not and... Um, yeah, she's she's been a great support, but it's it's been it's been amazing seeing her come back now. The we sort of spoke about it earlier, but the luxury of having these great players that, whether it's Elise or whether it's even Annabelle, what she's been able to achieve, um, the role that they still have. What's the role they can have when they're not playing to still help shape Victorian cricket? Firstly, they're just all really really good people, um, and you know they've got. They've got good mates within our squad, and um, and they love coming back into the Victorian space, mm. which is which is really cool. And um, they've obviously you know just 
as much Victorian as a part of it and as important as, as anyone else in, in the group. And um, you can see it's really noticeable when they come back in, um, just the, the intensity of training lifts. Um, there's more balls thrown. They hit a lot of balls. <laughs> um, <laughs> but, yeah, they, they bring um, obviously quality cricket, but they're, they're also just, um, yeah, genuine quality people as well. So um, it's, there's definitely a lot there that, you know, our girls sort of feed off. Now, you're not the only one that's had a setback through the last 12 months. Taylor seems to have been on the sidelines for too long considering, you know, the talent she's got and we all want to see her back bowling fast. Is she close again this time or is she being held back a little bit more to make sure this time it's it's the right <laughs> time? Poor Tay, I feel like she's always being held back, I that know, girl. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, she's. I think she's getting really close. She's, um, she's bowling really well. She's bowling quicker than Nets at the moment. So, um, yeah, I think they're... Yeah, hoping for some games in in January, which would be really cool. But um, yeah, she's obviously had a fair share of time on the on the sidelines. But um, she's she's fit. She's um, really happy, and yeah, it's I'm very excited to be able to play cricket with her because we haven't done that for a long time yeah. together too. So um, yeah, she's she's put in the hard yards, and I, I can't wait to be able to see her um, out there. How has she kept her spirits up with all that she's gone through? And I mean, it's a different story to yours in a lot of ways and obviously similar as well, but particularly with Taylor, the hype of someone that bowls as quickly as she does and and she had this rapid rise to then just be forced to to not be able to do it. How has she got through that period? Yeah, she's pretty incredible. She's very resilient, Tay. Um, she's – I think she's worked out what works for her in terms of um, getting that balance right. Um, she spent a bit of time – away from the cricket scene early doors um, in, a, in a foot rehab last year and, and went into um, the, the ballet and, and did some work in there with her, with her feet. And, um, yeah, she's, I think she's work out, worked out a way to manage herself in, in that space because whenever she, she turns up to, to training or into to Junction Oval, she, um, she brings the best version of herself. And, um, yeah, she, she's got a massive... Massive smile on her face all the time, and she she lights up a room when she walks into it. Um, so she's she's extremely valuable. She's also does so much behind the scenes for for the girls. Um, just little little things to to keep the team ticking along. Um, so yeah, she she's she's been incredible, really. Um, thanks for having a chat. Really appreciate it. It was so good to see you back. Um, the timing of the the podcast was pretty good off off the back of such great individual performances, but just to have you back around the group, as you said, walking out on the field and, and seeing you leading out the Victorian team. It is emotional for a lot of people in Victorian cricket, none more so than yourself, but to, to be back playing, I think, is a pretty special Christmas present for everyone here in Victorian cricket. So congratulations and hopefully 2024 is, um, well, it's significantly better than 2023. <laughs> Thanks, Adam. I appreciate it. Sophie Molyneux joining us on the Vic State Cricket Podcast, the, the skipper, of both the red team and the Navy team, and hopefully from a Navy point of view, there'll be uh, plenty of success in 2024.